And here is 750 points of Crimson Fist in a patrol attachment. And I think he's going to run through what they've got. So your leader. Okay, uh, my leader, Primaris Captain, he's got a Power Fist and a Plasma Pistol. Yep. Um, he's also a Pup Raiden Helm, so he's got Fist of Vengeance. Perfect. And his Warlord trait is Refuse to Die. Perfect. And what else is in the patrol attachment? Okay, I've got a five man Hellblaster squad. Just down here, yeah. Behind them? Behind I have two inter- two five man intercessor squads. Okay. And I have just a normal tactical squad and the sergeant there's got a power fist. Alright, and then finally over here. I have my lovely redemptive red knot. Um Plasma Incinerator. Plasma Incinerator Cannon, Icarus Rocket Pod, and little uh, Storm Bolters and the little Gatling Cannon as well. Okay. And that gives you six command points, correct? It does, yes. Okay, so that's that's the Crimson Fist Army. And obviously, let's go see what the orcs have bought. And here is 750 points of orcs. Uh, it's the Goth Clan Culture, which gives obviously sixes on melee, an extra hit, and an extra strength on the charge. Um, it is a battalion attachment, and down here we have leading it two HQs. Uh, the one on the left here is our mech, oh, sorry, big mech in mega armor. Uh, he has a teleporter blaster a power claw and a custom mega blaster um, also gave him a uh, proper killy which he has a plus one extra attack and ap uh, when fighting we then have next to him a weird boy no upgrades on him he has warpath and if i remember correctly fist of gork for path casting on the character and then obviously a battalion would not be complete without some walk boys so we have three squads of walk boys on the left here we have one squad of i think it's 13 plus a a uh, big shooter and a boss knob with a power claw. And then to the right here we have another squad, almost exactly the same, but it's just a 10 uh, or 11 man squad with the big shooter and a power claw. And then on the right here we have a shooter equipped mob, um, so all shooters and one big shooter and the boss knob has a, a big chopper instead of a power claw. Uh, these two squads here will be riding in the two trucks back here. There are no additional upgrades on them, so they're just uh, plain simple trucks. Uh, and then to the left here, one Death Dread equipped with all the claws. So no guns on it whatsoever, just lots of close combat goodness. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the 750 points list. Let's go over and see what the deployment of missions is. And this is our mission and deployment. So we have a fairly standard, almost Dawn of War style deployment. Uh, we have the objective drop as the um, objective, and basically it means we put an objective marker in the centre of the table. Uh, and each turn we roll off, the winner gets to move the objective 2d6 in any direction. Um, and basically at the end of each command phase it's worth one point, and if you're holding it at the end of the battle it is worth two points. Uh, and then we also drew the unstable reality twist, which basically means everyone has um, to subtract one from the leadership characteristics of all models, and we also subtract one when we're doing attrition tests, so this could be quite a leadership-based battle. However, that is the mission, now we'll go and see the point of the armies. Uh, here we are on this planet where a distress signal was sent out into space declaring that there was orcs on the planet. Uh, it's only a small band of orcs, however, the Crimson Fists, ever the orc haters, have decided to come down and sort this problem out and see if there's more than meets the eye. Um, essentially, this little orc town has popped up on the outskirts of a bigger orc settlement. So the Crimson Fists have dropped down to try and take control of this from the small black wall band that is currently here. And the orcs have all set up on this side of the battlefield, uh, looking over at that central objective. And then the Crimson Fists have taken the challenge and are deployed on the opposite side to them. Uh, an interesting rock and paper and scissors match coming up with lots of guns versus lots of axes, and we'll see how that goes. Um, Ultimately, uh, we know what the mission is. There is only one objective on the screen, which is in the centre, so I'm pretty sure it's going to get bloody very quickly. Uh, it will be moving 2d6 at the beginning of every battle round, so that may favour one player or the other. We don't know. Um, however, let's see who will be going first. Here we go. So for the Orcs, we have a three. And for the Crimson Fists, a four. So I will be right back uh, in a moment with turn one. Fists. Before we move into the movement phase for Crimson Fists, as you can see here, the objective marker has moved rather 
a lot closer to the orc lines. Um, I won the roll off in the first battle round to move the objective marker, and I rolled 11 inches on it, so it has moved back this way towards my lines. However, it's not scorable to the third battle round, so it does not necessarily end the game just yet. Um, however, it does mean that Vicky may have to be a bit more aggressive on her first turn. So let's get onto movement. Turn one movement for the Crimson Fists, and as you can see, they have all moved up. I think the only one that advanced was the tactical squad in the middle there, because they had slightly shorter range weapons. Uh, only rolled a two inch on that, so they moved up eight. Obviously, the uh, big stomper over there on the right uh, managed to move up eight inches anyway, because that's his normal movement. So they are heading uh, towards the middle of the table and over to that distant orc mob over there. Uh, obviously, they pulled the initiative here, so let's see how they do in their shooting phase. Turn one shooting for the Crimson Fists. Uh, obviously, before the shooting phase happened, obviously, we had a Wisdom of the Ancients put down uh, for re rolling a ones to wound on the Dreadnought. And also a load of command points were spent on this squad of intercessors here, giving them, uh, I think it was Bolter Drill, Steady Advance as well. So that was four command points in total, I think, uh, leaving Vicky on two. Um, and however, uh, that meant that she was actually exploding uh, with two off, uh, off a six um, in this particular case. So every six she rolled with a Bolter, got her two extra shots. Pretty good in this particular scenario. So anyway... Uh, the Dreadnought fired into one of the uh, trucks over here, and as you can see, it is no longer there. It didn't explode, but the boys had to get out. And likewise, the Hellblasters at the back over here also fired all of their shots overcharged into the other one and killed it as well. Um, unfortunately, uh, Ramshackle did not help with there because the weapons were all strength 8 and above. Rather painful. And then we had a whole load of Bolter shots firing from the squads down here into this squad on this side. We barely scraped through a leadership, however they are just about standing off losing four boys. So that is the end of turn one for the Crimson Fist, as obviously there's nothing in assault range. So as it stands, we are holding the objective at the moment. We can't score that until round three, so we've got to do something about pushing these guys away. However, they're in a pretty good position to stop that happening. So let's roll on into Orcs, turn one. Turn one movement for the Orcs and down here as you can see most things have moved forward We had the Orc boy squad that was on the objective moved to the right here behind this uh, line of sight blocking train Because obviously they just felt like there was too many shots piling in from all those bolters um, They were filled Here by the shooters moving up forward and also the death dread which advance moved up got a nice 12 inch move uh, the mega mega knob um, moved up towards the objective along with the uh, weird boy and the squad of boys with them has moved up as well. They advanced, but they only got a one inch advance, so not fantastic. Uh, that is movement then. Let's move on into the shooting phase. Turn one, psychic and shooting for the orcs. In the psychic phase, we had the weird boy here do warpath onto this squad of boys there, and it went off. And uh, we also had a fist of gork go off onto the mega knob, which uh, gave it plus three strength and attacks. Not much use at the moment, but he does have it in, just in case something wild and crazy happens. Um, we then fired as many shots as we could from everything that was in range. There was mainly big shooters and the shooters from this squad at the front here, and they all fired into this squad on the left uh, here. Um, and we did nothing because uh, apparently orcs can't shoot, but then everyone knew that anyway. <laughs> so that is actually uh, the end of the psychic shooting phase. We do have one attempted charge to make, so let's see what happens. So we only had one option to charge in this whole phase, which was this squad at the front here. I did try to get them into the central uh, tactical squad, however, we fell by one inch with the reroll. So, oh well, uh, we'll now move on into turn two for the Crimson Fists. Just before battle round two starts, we rolled off to see who could move the objective. Vicky won this time and has moved it actually into the middle of my uh, my mob there, which is quite handy. But to be honest, there wasn't really uh, much she could move it within six inches to take it away from me. Um, so that is where it's gone, a bit nearer to her. And uh, hopefully I'll be holding it by turn three still, but we shall see. Turn two for the Crimson Fist coming up. As we move into turn two for the Crimson Fist, again we had... Wisdom of the Ancients put on two Dreadnought, giving re-rolls to one on Wound. And then obviously, as you can see, they've all moved up towards this central part here, because obviously the key to this game is the objective. 
Um, we'll have to see if uh, they blast their way through the first rank of Orcs, which, uh, with that many bowls, it could be an uh, interesting little thing there. Um, I'm more worried about my poor Death Dread about to receive probably about 4 billion plasma shots to the face, but we shall see. Um, we've got some units back here that might be able to help out. Um, I'm going to stay optimistic, though. I'm going to stay optimistic, Vicky. Your horrible crimson fists and their gun. <laughs> so let's let's see what happens in the shooting phase. Turn to shooting for the crimson fists. We had steady advance played on this squad here, so they could fire twice after moving. Uh, and then we basically had all the plasmas at the back and the plasma from the um, dreadnought fire into death dread, and that was blown up fairly successfully. And then all of the other bolter shots from uh, the other squads that are remaining here. So basically the Nortat squad, the squad on the right there, and the squad on the left, fired into, first of all, the shooter boys, which were there, and then obviously onto this squad on the left, and took that down to six men remaining. So that was a fairly successful shooting phase, and I think we're going to have a charge in a minute, but we will see. So I believe the Dreadnought is going to attempt to charge into uh, this squad of boys. So we'll be right back in a moment with turn two, Assault for the Crimson Fists. And at the end of turn two for the Crimson Fists, uh, we had the Dreadnought attempt to charge, but did not make it. So we are now going to be heading on to turn two for the Orcs and see if they can claw back some points. Turn two for the Orcs. And at the end of the movement phase, as you can see here, we have moved up. We are currently holding the objective, but that doesn't come into play till next turn uh, on the command phase. So we're going to see if we can do some damage to these remaining um, Marines over here. I oh, say remaining, they haven't actually lost a single unit yet. Very powerful uh, against this particular army that I bought, but that's not unsurprising. I haven't played Orcs for a while. So we'll see now if we can go and do a bit of shooting damage and then into Assault. Okay, so we had Psychic and Shooting. Both Psychic powers went off, so the Weird Boy put Warpath onto this squad of boys, getting that off very easily. And likewise, got Fist of Gork off on this one with a normal profile, so he's got basically two strength and two attacks additional if he does make it into combat. Uh, we then had the Mega Knob here, sorry, the Mega, the Mega Big Mech, Big Mech in Mega Armor, that's the one I'm looking for, fire his Teleporter Blaster and Custom Mega Blaster into the Dreadnought, taking it down to, I think, four wounds in the end, so not bad shooting. We then had all of the small arms fire fire into one of the squads of Space Rangers, which is this one over here, and we took one down to one wound. Um, I'm really hoping we do a little bit better in combat, but we will obviously see shortly as this squad of boys makes their uh, charge attempt, which I'm hoping they'll get because they're fairly close. Um, so that is the end of shooting. Let's head on into combat. Turn two, assault for the orcs, and the green tide has turned the tide. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot less blue on the board. Um, this was made down to a few things. Um, I did use Unstoppable Carnage on this squad over here, and along with Warpath, that gave them some pretty good hits in combat. And we managed to take out, uh, or heart, pretty much put all the units down to one to two men in each of the uh, tactical slash Primaris Incessor squads, and then they failed their leaderships due to the uh, of the kind of the game twists because it gave them an extra minus one, so they lost a couple extra there. In fact, this this primary squad that was here was completely wiped out. Um, the Power Claw went into this one with his mate um, and took him down to two in the end. Uh, we almost got him, but we couldn't quite get all four wounds off on it, which is a bit of a shame. However, in his revenge, he splatted the remaining boy that was uh, uh, kind of uh, clubbed up with this guy here. So pretty good. Uh, the Mega Knob, oh, sorry, the, sorry, the Big mech in mega armor uh, did his job and went in and pounded things. However, Vicky did use um, transhuman. transhuman as the one I'm looking for um, on them, so he, he wasn't quite as effective that round. And obviously, he still has a bloody captain over here to deal with. So I guess we'll see what happens uh, with that next round. However, that does actually conclude turn two in its entirety. Both sides looking a little bit depleted now. Um, obviously, I've still got my weird boy back here on the objective. Um, Let's see what happens in turn three. And obviously, at the start of turn three, battle round, we had to roll off to see who moved the objective marker. I got a six, but he got a one, and I decided not to move it, because it does just say you can move it, it doesn't say you have to move it. So I decided to leave it here with my weird boy at the back, because it feels quite safe back here, although 
Um, obviously, he could be a target of several shots this round. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if Ricky's more concerned about whether it's the boys at the front here or the weird boy at the back. Um, anyway, let's move on into Crimson Fists, turn three. Here we go, turn three, Crimson Fists. And Vicky has done a little bit of movement, mainly shuffling. So as you can see, the captain down here in the middle has moved up closer towards the Dreadnought and the um, <coughs> Big Mech. Um, the Hellblast has stayed relatively still where they were. And obviously the Dreadnought is currently locked in combat. But I think he might be finding some close range shots into that Orc knob shortly. Uh, no distractions played as of yet. Vicky does have one command point remaining, which I think she's saving in case she needs it. However, let's move on into turn three shooting for the Crimson Fists. Turn three shooting for the Crimson Fists, and obviously back here, all of the plasmas fired overcharged into... Well, he's not there anymore. The weird boy has been evaporated. Uh, that's the only thing I can explain. He had so much plasma in him, he became a plasma cloud himself. Um, we then had the captain here uh, having manoeuvred around to make sure that he could actually shoot at this... Um, uh, mega knob here, um, in sorry, the big mega, mega knob. I'm gonna get it right one day. I don't know why I keep saying the wrong thing for him. <laughs> um, he didn't uh, do anything, he actually rolled a one, but luckily Vicky says she didn't overcharge, which was very convenient. I didn't, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she's saying, she's sticking with her story. So, um, he uh, didn't do anything there. So, and obviously, the dreadnought fired all of his weaponry, um, into the remaining uh, boss knob there, and unfortunately, you only killed him, just killed him to be fair. Um, it was very close. So that's him out of combat, um, and that's, yeah, that's this uh, shooting phase done. So we're now going to head to combat and see what happens. Okay, turn three combat for the Crimson Fist. There's been a slight change in fortunes for both of us. Vicky charged her captain into my, uh, I'm going to get it wrong again, you are. <laughs> <laughs> big mech in mega armour, um, killed him. Uh, I then used uh, the ability to fight uh, when he dies again, and I killed her. Vicky then had the get up on a four up and failed that. So basically they knocked each other out. They're both dead. And then the Orc boys here fought the remaining two Space Marines and killed them both off. Um, so that's pretty much left us uh, no one holding the objective and both of us uh, pretty depleted. Although I do have to get through this Dreadnought in my turn, which is going to be interesting. However, that does conclude turn three for the Crimson Fists. So let's see where we go for turn three for the Orcs. Turn three for the Orcs, and down here the movement phase has finished. We have moved to this gap between the Dreadnought and the Hellblasters. Um, I'm going to try and take the Dreadnought out in shooting. It's going to have to be pretty lucky. He's got two wounds left, uh, but I've only got Sluggers and Stick Bombs. So I guess we'll have to see how that pans out. And then hopefully it charging the Hellblasters uh, as, as a final uh, goodbye to them. Uh, but this is going to be down to the wire in this last uh, couple of turns, I think. So let's see what happens in the shooting phase for Orcs in turn three. So turn three, end of shooting for the Orcs. As you can see, the Dreadnought is celebrating with his, uh, on, with his constitution holding strong. I did actually take a wound off with a stick bomb, and I wounded twice with sluggers, but Vicky managed to save those, sadly. No AP on them, so uh, a bit annoying. But he's on one wound, and then obviously we've got the Hellblasters here at full strength. So I think I know what I'm going to do. So I'll be right back in a minute with uh, turn three assault for the Orcs. Turn three, assault for the orcs. And yeah, we finished the Hellblasters off. They actually managed to kill themselves with a morale issue. Um, <laughs> um, however, um, it does leave you with this rather big 40 ton problem over here. Um, however, it's only on one wound. And uh, we've got one, uh, it's, uh, obviously it's gonna be turn four for the Crimson Fist in a second. So Vicky will get to decide what she wants to do with it. It can't really move very fast though. Uh, it does still have a lot of firepower, even though it's gonna be hitting on fives. Um, I think she's got a fair chance, so. It may come down to potentially just the boss knob on his own against the uh, Dreadnought. I mean, we'll see shortly. Anyway, be right back with turn four for the Crimson Fists. Turn four for the Crimson Fists, and as you can see, the Dreadnought has moved onto the objective with its four inch move. Um, didn't have a lot to go with. However, as we move around to the side of the battlefield, you can see the Orcs are still where they were at the end of the battle uh, from the last turn, and uh, the Dreadnought has got a nice clear line of sight on them. So I think we're back in a minute with turn four shooting for the Crimson Fists. And we come back to the same camp position as we did at the end of the last turn, and unfortunately, I am taking away this Orc 
knob because he failed his leadership at the end of the turn. Uh, Vicky fired all the shots in and killed everyone except for him. I didn't have anything I could do to negate taking leadership and at minus one already, plus all the casualties I had in that turn from the shooting from all of the dreadnought weapons, um, that was the end. So Vicky Wolves end up scoring uh, two points at the end of the game <laughs> for holding the objective with her one wound dreadnought. Unbelievable in my opinion, some might say, what the hell. However, um, from a game that went from uh, looking like it was going to go very one-sided, uh, it, it kind of went quite fun in the end. So we'll be right back in a minute with a wrap-up. And here we are at the end of turn four and the battle round for the whole game. Vicky will be winning on two victory points at the end of the game because she's holding it on the last turn of the game because there's no more of my units left. Um, it was actually quite an interesting game in the end. I actually thought I was down and out by the end of turn two. However, that nice charge I managed to get off in the second turn um, was, uh, or third turn, I think it was the, I think it was the uh, second turn, um, was pretty good. I managed to just tie up all the force at the back and managed to swing it to about even. I just couldn't quite get through this dreadnought. However, if there are any more orcs in this area, um, and uh, I think that Dreadnought's getting looted because I don't think he's got anyone to get him out of here and he's only on one wound so he's going to be limping so hopefully a mech nearby will take him as a target and uh, construct him into something a bit more interesting so Vicky did you have a good game? Yeah it was a really good game, I enjoyed it Good, um, obviously it was an open play mission for everyone um, scores will be on the screen and get them when they come up on here shortly um, I'm trying to think of a unit of the match for me but I think it's going to have to be the uh, uh, probably the big mech in Megrama because he managed to uh, do quite a lot of firepower shots. It was actually his shooting that did the best in my opinion. Um, I don't know, I assume your dreadnought was the best unit. Oh yeah. Definitely. Just for staying alive. Yeah, one wing dreadnought. <laughs> one wing dreadnought at the end of it. Bloody redemptors! That's what I say. They're awesome! <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the game. Um, we'll be back again shortly. This is Tom from Back to Studio and I'll talk to you soon.